and thanks for joining me today. So <clears throat> what we're going to do today is we're going to put this uh, wire assembly, it's a kill switch wire assembly with di two diodes in it, into this BCS tractor. So just to do a, a quick recap, my wife and I picked up this tractor to replace our John Deere 110 with a tiller. Um, my wife is a market gardener and the 110 worked, but was not quite the right tool for the job for her. And so this BCS is kind of the gold standard for market tractors. Um, we picked it up and it wasn't running. And I have a really long video up here of me working on it, trying to figure out what's going on, fumbling through diagnostics. And so finally I sat down at a computer instead of trying to figure out how everything worked with just using a multimeter and did a bit of research. So long story short, I was able to identify that we were getting spark out of this cylinder, but we were not getting spark out of this cylinder. So we took the, the cover off, we uh, removed that kill switch wire and retested to check if we got spark. And we got spark on both cylinders, reconnected the kill switch wire. And again, no spark on this cylinder, but spark on this cylinder. So as far as I can tell, that means <clears throat> the, the diode, one of the diodes in the kill switch cylinder is bad and that's allowing um, electrical energy to pass through and interfere with the operation of this armature, uh, magneto, coil, whatever you want to call it. Uh, those words kind of get used interchangeably, though I think there probably is a right word to use. If you know the right word to use, comment down below on which one is correct. Is it armature, is it magneto, or is it a coil? Um, so anyways, what we're going to do today is get this kill switch wire assembly installed. This is a pretty generic thing for Briggs & Stratton Vanguard engines. Uh, it's super simple. I'll show you in just a minute, but the part number is 844547. Um, I'm in Canada. This cost me about 27 Canadian dollars, uh, which seems like quite a bit for a little wire assembly, but it has some diodes in it. Anyways, it'll be, if it gets us up and running, it doesn't matter. So, um, we're going to get right into this today, and I just wanted to say thanks for joining. So when I first started working on this tractor, I spent a ton of time just messing around with a multimeter, trying to recall my knowledge of small engine electronics that I haven't used in five years. So anyways, that wasn't a great idea. I spent way too much time doing it. Uh, if you're interested in seeing my troubleshooting, you can, again, you can check out the video up here. If you're interested in seeing us working on the John Deere uh, in order to get it ready for sale, you can check out that video up here. Anyways, without further ado, I just want to explain how simple, really, these electronics on these magnetos are. <clears throat> so, uh, basically, the magneto generates a spark by this magnet. As the, the, as the flywheel turns and the magnet here passes, uh, these arms on the magneto. Um, it creates an electrical current which goes into this part and um, gets converted to a higher voltage which is then passed through this spark plug wire and into the spark plug where it jumps this gap and creates a spark and you get ignition of fuel. It's incredibly simple especially on this tractor it doesn't even have an alternator because there's no battery involved. It's literally just a pull start like as simple as you can get electronics and the only wiring i repeat the only wiring involved in this thing is the kill switch you can see i've got the end taped up here and the way the kill switch works is it shorts these coils um, the spark part of the coils to ground and so on our handlebars we have a little lever that you close and hold that closed and when you that keeps the electrical circuit open so not connected and when you let go of the handle, it closes the electrical circuit, which causes uh, the, this, this wire gets connected to ground, which uh, feeds, which grounds out these, both of these coils. And when the coil is grounded, it can't produce a spark um, for the spark plugs. So that's really how simple this is. I spent way too much time trying to figure out how these operated and I really should have just Googled it. So anyways, um, just wanted to say it's that simple. We're gonna just whip this wire off. We're gonna replace it with the new one. And then we're gonna confirm that we get spark on both sides now. So you can see on the top, we have the old diode wire and on the bottom we have the new one. And this really is very simple. It just has, uh, it just consists of a length of wire with a diode on each pigtail. And this, each of these ends connects to the magneto 
and then this end connects to the kill switch wire. Okay, so we're very excited. We just confirmed we have spark on both cylinders now, so that new kill switch wire with the diodes in it was the right part to fix this thing up. So we know we're getting fuel, we know we're getting spark, and I'm pretty confident we're getting air too. So we're gonna get this thing spark plugs back in and try and fire it up. Oh, and we confirmed the kill switch is working too. So when the when the red handle is not held down, we don't get spark. But when you hold it down, you get spark. So the good news is once we start this, we'll be able to turn it off as well, which I like. So the trick that I use when I'm putting in spark plugs or any other small bolt that I don't want to be too tight is don't hold your big long ratchet right at the end. Just grab it right at the head and turn it. And you're good. Then it's really hard to put too much torque on the thing. Okay, both spark plugs are on. We're gonna wheel this out of here and try to start it up. Compression test. We're going to clarify that we're actually getting compression in our cylinders. Okay, gas on. There's gas pouring out the top here, so I think the carburetor is certainly being given a good supply of it. Hundred and five psi. That's good. So hundred. That's great. I think that's plenty of psi to run. If you enjoy seeing this kind of uh, working real time troubleshooting how to content on equipment on vehicles. Uh, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, as well as like this video and comment with any questions you might have. I'm happy to answer and do my best to get back to you as quick as I can. Okay, so we're going to try just pouring some fuel down the carburetor to air out, rule out fuel, no fuel being an issue. Because we've confirmed multiple times we have spark, we have no air cleaner on here, so we're not having a problem getting air. Um, I see fuel coming out of the overflow tube in the carburetor, but that doesn't for sure mean that it's going in. So I know there's fuel in there now because I just poured it in. I'm going to leave the choke half closed. Here we go. Okay, choke open. Exciting. Okay. So we gotta go back to the drawing board and figure out if there's a common cause for these vanguards getting 
no fuel into them. So that seems to be our problem. We're not getting fuel, even though we have fuel coming down the hose line and out the overflow valve. Apparently it's not getting into the engine. So we'll figure this out. Pulled this gas out of the carburetor and it is green, like not clear, it's green. I'm not used to seeing gas like that. So it might just be that our gas is really just bad. So I don't know how many times I've had this thing apart now, but um, finally, I think I've I, I've confirmed that every single passageway, like you can see there's four passageways on the top there. Uh, one, two, three, four, and they are all clear. That little one there is all clear. The big venture is clear. When I spray into any one of them, it comes out into the, uh, into the body of the carburetor, but I'm still not getting any fluids like into the carburetor when I turn the engine over. The float is working, um, it's letting letting fuel in. So the, the only thing left, I think this is how fuel gets from the float bowl, there's a little brass screw down there. Fuel gets from the float bowl into this emulsifier passageway, then it'll make its way through all of these and into the carburetor. So I think this guy down here is clogged. So I am going to have to drain the fuel bowl, uh, rip off this front red cover once more, and then I have access when I take out this screw back in here to be able to then remove this jet, for lack of a better term, that brass jet, and unclog that. Because I think that's the only thing left I haven't touched. I'm almost certain now that's where our issue is. <laughs> 